going on guys tonight we got a Honda Foreman 450 and we need to repair the starter so this thing's been giving him some clicking issues you can tap on the starter still works now this is one of those four wheelers that sets all year until deer season they get it out and ride it so uh, I'm pretty sure the brushes inside the starter are getting stuck so I'm gonna take it off show y'all how to take it apart this will be the same procedure if you rebuild the starter so and I'll put a link in the description for a rebuild kit if you just want to rebuild yours. I'm going to check this one. If the brush is still good, we're going to clean it up, grease them, put it back together. And uh, like I said, we'll get to it. Okay, so if you come right here, this is the right side of the engine. you got a screw right here, 10 millimeter, and one down there, one over here, and one over there. I just pulled out the top two, and you can get this cover pulled back like that. Expose your starter. There's two tins right here. You can see those. You just take them out with a box end of a 10 millimeter wrench. And uh, I already got them loose for this procedure. So uh, I'll get these unscrewed and I'll show you what to do with this wire because don't just grab a wrench and try to take that nut off. Okay, so I got the two bolts out of there. All right, this wire, okay, don't grab a wrench and just turn it because if you twist this whole bolt down inside the starter housing it could tear the nylon insulator and cause it to break the wire loose inside so what you always want to do is get you a pair of pliers or something and put around this right here again and grab a hold of the wire and then take your wrench while you're holding your pliers and unscrew this nut now because uh you don't want this to twist down inside the starter because uh that could cause damage to the inside and i'll show you what it'll damage when we get it apart but you take that wire off right there mine already had it loose so just set the nut back on there so you don't lose it and then basically sometimes you can grab these starters i'll see if i can do it this one normally you just take a extension and a hammer and tap it right here on the front and it'll pop out but you can wiggle them sometimes like this with your hand and just push it all the way back and it'll come out and you got an o-ring right there that'll come in the rebuild kit that goes around this seal then check your gears you know now this does plug into a bearing on the other side or a bushing all right on the top here we got two bolts and you want to look at these lines here see there's there's a line on the front housing then a little scratch on that part and you want to keep sure that make sure that stays lined up when you go to put it back together or your bolts won't go through so we'll get this in the vise and i'll show y'all what's going to come out of it okay so i got a 932 socket a ratchet get these two bolts out so uh i'll unscrew them real fast now these bolts do run the whole length of the starter and i just got it clamped in a vise down here to hold it up but you don't want to go crazy when you tighten these back up because they're just some little bitty bolts now these there's two o-rings here and there you want to replace those when you do your rebuild or try to make sure to put them back in there because if they're not in there when you go to uh go in any kind of water it'll actually get inside the uh starter because those are the seals so that one see it come out I got this one over here. These things are actually really simple once you learn how to do them. But they're one of the easiest starters to do. Now most starters on any ATV is about the same. So even the bolts here have uh, O-rings on them to uh, seal. Keep water out of the bolt holes. So uh, let's keep up with those. Now the top's loose. And give this thing a couple taps and it should just come off there fairly easy slide off like that there's an o-ring i was talking about and uh, there'll be a lot of black powder looking stuff in here and that's uh dust from the brushes now you want to make sure you don't dump this stuff off you got a washer it looks like that and a nylon washer and some shims just leave all that on the armature center armature then bump the next part a little bit it'll pick up like that right there and then you want to pay attention to this this is where the brushes ride 
you can take your finger and push this back and the magnets will try to pull this off now i just lay this down the direction it came off and you can tell that the wherever the logo was upside down when i took it off and you see all that powder in there there's also two or three shims in the bottom i think it's three on this one just want to grab all those and keep up with them and i'll just stack them in order down here yeah i just stacked them brushes or bushings down here there's basically like little flat washers but now you see all this powder in here and another thing you want to look at is these windings right here so if any of this stuff is melted running through here the starter is going to need replaced because the armature is basically weren't so you take sandpaper real fine grit and clean this up and that'll make it get good contact then what you want to look at is you take this and get all the black powder out just dump it out over here and look what falls out because see uh that is actually a piece of the insulator for the bolt but this brush you can see it in there a little lead looking square it moves freely and the one over here is pretty much stuck so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these 10 millimeter nuts off so, so i grabbed a crescent wrench and broke this nut loose so you unscrew it right here and just take it off and set it down and these are all the nylon insulators I'm talking about. I don't know if they're actually nylon, but there's a metal one on top. The plastic style one goes on the bottom. And there's some more under here. They're just like plastic washers. Take them and set them down. And you can take your thumb and push and pick up on this brush plate and push the bolt through. And it'll come out like that right there. And then you have your bolt and brush plate and just make sure you keep up with all these little washers because they're important what they do is keep the keep the bolt from coming in contact with the outside case inside this hole and if it comes in contact it'll basically ground out your battery when you push the start button so right here we got our brushes see there's one that moves one that's stuck and you can tell by looking at this one that if the wire is really tight against the stop and you can't mash it out no further see that one's got some left but it was just got moisture in it from and uh cause it gets stuck so i'm gonna see if we got another brush plate laying around Let's see if i got a better one and we can actually change that which this is the positive brush this one over is the negative it hooks to the housing this one hooks to hot so I looked around, I couldn't find another brush plate. I thought I had one, but whatever. I looked at, I pulled the brush out here and it was just kind of beat up on the edge, if you look at it, but it does have a lot of life left on it. Normally I would replace this, but I don't have one laying around and they need this thing like tomorrow for deer season. So I'm just gonna clean it up and put this back in there. And you've seen that plastic spacer top deal insulator broke. But the rubber o-ring actually there's a rubber o-ring that that helps with when it goes through the actual metal housing piece and i'm just going to put one of these one of these nylon ones on the inside where that plastic one was and then the rubber o-ring and then the parts on the outside of the hole so i'm going to grease these up most of the time they get stuck if they get stuck back they won't come in contact with the armature and it'll be losing connection that's one you tap on it it'll wiggle on the uh little metal piece or the the piece right here the where the brushes run it'll make contact and then that's why it'll go again so as long as we oil this up we oil up all the bushings get all the dust out of there because the dust can cause a lot of problems too getting on the armature so i'll get this back in there and show y'all how to put it back together like i said it's the exact same procedure as if you would have bought this stuff new basically you can change these bushings if you want to with your rebuild kit i honestly wouldn't mess with these because there's nothing wrong with them i just put a dab of grease in there with my finger but use like a uh, 
a little hook tool and go in there and pull them out. They can be really tricky to get out. But the back one I definitely wouldn't mess with, even if I was doing a rebuild. But now this up here, you got a roller bearing. It normally does get oiled from the engine. And I'd probably do the I'd do the brushes and the O-rings and be good to go. So uh, I'll get this put back in there and we can see what we can do with it and see how good it'll work. So basically there's this little spring on the back on the hot side. It's the same way on the ground side. You can see it in there. I don't know if you can, but you pull that back and that's how you take the brush in and out. And you want to make sure the little side with the square, if you do have to take your brushes out. Now, if you buy a rebuild kit, they're already going to come in this plate. And you just basically change the plate, put the starter back together with the other stuff changed. But, like I said, this is for the people who don't have the parts laying around and just bought like an old folder that was been setting up for a long time. The starter's not working. So I basically got a, uh, what a drywall screw from fitting there and pry that spring back and try to hold it might have put it in the vise over here to hold it for me the little brush plate and the vise makes it real easy basically i'm going to take this spring right here and pry it back and then take the contact side of the brush and put it back in there like that and i did grease the outside of it this can be a little tricky, but yeah, you should get it back in there. You can come over here and get the spring too. You can put it in there like that, make sure it goes all the way forward. Take your finger and move it back and forth. And it should slide all the way to the front of the hole to this wire is the only thing that's stopping it from going forward. And it's moving good. I put a dab of this grease on the other one and uh, want to grease it up. You can use like oil. Sometimes I've used transmission fluid motor oil. Just anything to get in there and lubricate the uh, contact surface. Okay, that's what they look like after I greased them up a little bit and they're all moving good. So I'm gonna take this and I'm actually, uh, I said to use sandpaper, I'm going to use the uh, the wire wheel on my bench grinder over here and just run it across this thing and just basically knock the any burrs off. Now when this thing loses contact with the brushes, it actually arcs, causing it to burn spots on there. That's what makes it turn black, it's the arcing. So I'm going to take my grinder here and just brush it off. So now you can see it's real shiny and clean and that, that's a wire wheel, not a, don't use the grinding wheel because you'll pit it up bad. Now you always want to sand or do anything in this direction, don't do it up and down because that'll make it rough towards the direction the brush is set and that'll actually cause it to eat the brushes more than you need to. Now you just want to knock the carbon or whatever's on the outside off from it being arcing. Now if this part, the part down here is rusted real bad from water, you can run it, a wire wheel over it. Just make sure you don't get into where these windings are because they're made to be insulated. Okay, so right here on this bolt, I was talking about it had a messed up insulator on it. It's actually supposed to have a plastic square. You can see part of it down there, but there's an O-ring on here. The O-ring is actually where it goes through the steel housing. And it's one of those square style ones. And I'm going to try to take that off and I'm going to use this big flat washer, nylon washer. I, I don't know if it's nylon or plastic or whatever, but basically it's an insulator. I'm going to take this O-ring off and I'm going to replace it with that washer. So we'll get this off right here now your rebuild kit should come with new ones of these or i would think it would so we'll put that over that and that'll keep it from contacting the cover and then we'll put the rubber washer or o-ring back on the bolt like that right there 
and get it all the way down and that'll actually hold that on there and we'll get a rag clean all this uh, brush material dust out of here you can actually wash it out with paint thinner or something and I'll get that wiped out okay so I got that all wiped out you can see it's kind of clean I'm gonna take my pinpoint greaser here and grease up this center bushing hole a little bit you ain't gotta go too crazy just a little bit of grease you can take one of the bolts and run it around that way it'll grease the back of that uh where the starter runs now put make sure you put all your uh shims back in there this one actually had four shims and the thicker one i believe is going to go towards the bottom so you stack them up put them back on there and just get them ready you can actually put grease on these to hold them in place if they're falling off like mine are and that one that's got grease won't fall out so what you're gonna do is you can get them in i'm gonna go ahead and install the brush plate so i got my brush plate here take the bolt it goes on the side that's going down like that right there and put the bolt back through the hole you always want to do that first so it don't get in a bind or nothing like that and let me tighten this up so get that down there take your finger and put it through there make sure that o-ring goes through and the square piece will actually keep the bolt from turning that's a lot of times how people break it they go to unscrew the bolt and they twist it without holding the wire and it twists that square and breaks it inside there so we'll put that in there it's got a little slot over here that locks the brush plate from spinning so it should go in that slot and the way you get the brushes back in take your shims and lay them in here over the center hole so i see a lot of people have problems with with uh getting the brushes back in and i'm actually going to stick these shims on the bottom of this so you can stick them on the bottom of this put them on there and then take this with this still in the vise and drop the tip down on this side and then when you lever it over you can spin it a little bit and it goes right into the brushes there ain't no trying to hold them back and with a pick or nothing like that make sure the brush plate stays in good wipe the this piece out remember the label went with the letters upside down so this is the bottom side that's the magnets are further away from so we'll wipe that off and i don't know if somebody's rebuilt this before me so but by judging this distance here at the bottom that's where that's going to go because the magnets mainly sit around the armature parts so spin that a little bit make sure the brushes are contacting and before we get too far i'm going to go ahead and put the next set of nylon spacers on calling them nylon then the washer steel washer and the backup nut that went at the bottom that way in case i have to stick my finger in there and hold that i could have done it before i got this far but i got a little ahead of myself but you just don't want to twist this bolt inside here because you'll rip the wire off the back and that won't be good so just snug it up it ain't got to be crazy tight so it's not physically holding nothing but the starter wire just whatever you do don't spin it you don't want to suck it through them washers so that'll be good just be careful when you you tighten your starter wire up all right so i know we'll put a little grease in this bearing but we know it's going to get oiled so it'll be fine and that's the cap that goes on the front now we're going to get this and we'll look at our lines again that i was talking about there's the lines on here i got a line over here a line over there if you look in the bottom you'll see the bolt holes that will only go through in one spot and you'll look in here and you can see where the bolts go here and there you'll just put that back on there with 
and keep your finger on the shaft sticking out. Ow, and it'll smash your fingers too. And I forgot the O-ring. Okay, make sure you put your O-ring around the base. Okay, this one's still got O-ring on that side. See the O-ring still on there? You put them on there. Put your finger on the shaft because it'll try to jump up out of there to get to the magnet. And then once you got it sitting on here, you take your fingers and turn it around to where the lines line up. And try not to pick the middle up out of there because the brushes will pop out. So since see that it's sitting on there flat, it doesn't turn once the lines line up. Label's still right here with the starter wire bolt and the label is upside down like it's supposed to be. Next O-ring, put it on the top like that right there. Then grab your cap and it just slides back over. Make sure your washer with the squares is still on top with the washers under it. And uh, you can put a dab of grease right here on this washer that's looks like nylon or something put it on there just for the lubrication and uh then we'll grab this and normally you have a seal here and like i said there's a bearing in there that you can change during the rebuild process if you want to and now we'll take this and basically line it up with the lines it can go either way i'm pretty sure but just for the heck of it i'm gonna look make sure so yeah because if you it ain't right the bolts will just go in and won't ever thread into nothing so i'm gonna put the bolts in spin them around and just wiggle them a little bit and they should start screwing in make sure they still have their washers and o-ring placed on them keep water out Next one. And this little washer that's under here has a flat side and that always points towards the starter gear side or where the shaft comes out. That way it gives it like a surface, a steel surface to set on instead of just the bolts cutting into the aluminum housing. So I get them on there, I'll take my ratchet, run them back in till they're good and snug. I don't really know the torque specs or nothing on this, but you know, don't just torque her down where it breaks off. So, I just, the way I usually test, I just keep my hand close to the top of the ratchet. You run that in and kind of do a back and forth style pattern because you don't want to tighten one all the way up then go to the other one because it'll pull everything crooked and it'll make it harder. Yeah, it'll pull everything crooked and make it complicated. You don't want all that to happen. So just run them back in. And most starters, a lot of times, just need the brushes cleaned. And they'll work for a long time. And now if the brushes are gone, that needs a rebuild. If the armature's burnt, starter needs replaced. A lot of times how you burn the armature, you'll know because the motor's not wanting to turn and you'll smell the starter itself burning. And that's normally a sign of a burnt armature. So then grab your shaft on top. You should be able to spin it very freely. Shouldn't feel any rough spots in it. So we're back at the side of the engine. I'll take the starter. And you can put a little grease on there if you want to. This one's kind of old up so I'll just take it and get it started in the gears you shouldn't have to force this thing back in here or nothing like that it should just wiggle like this one goes in by hand and grab your two 10 millimeter bolts and just put your hand over here and wiggle it back and forth and the bolt should start fairly easy on this Honda now I, I recommend to do the back bolt first that way you can tighten it so just a little wiggle back and forth and it should start screwing in there. So snug it up like that right there. Pull your 
10 millimeter starter bolt back off. Put your wire on under the boot. Put that right there. I'll screw that one back on. And like I said, don't go too crazy with this bolt either. It don't have to be super tight. All it's doing is holding the wire for connection. And you don't want to leave it, leave it. You don't want to leave it loose, but just a little snug. Just don't spin it, because see, like if it starts to spin, just stop, because it's good. So if you spin it, you're tearing stuff up in there. So now let's see if it works. Go ahead and stick these two tins back in the little plastic cover that goes over the side of the motor. Just screw them back in. Snug them up and you should be good to go everybody like and subscribe i hope y'all like this little starter video something simple but uh yeah like i said most atv starters are pretty much the same thing they all work the same way two little brushes a little armature some of them are harder to get off than others but most of them you can rebuild pretty simple most of the time it's just brushes now if you say you drowned it out and you kept hitting the starter button when the motor was locked up from hydro locked and some smoke come off of it yeah it's probably just needs a starter now i'm gonna drop a link down at the bottom for a cheap ebay starter and the cheap rebuild kit the starter run you about 40 bucks now the the brush kit is about 13 bucks so if you want to put a little time and keep your oem starter instead of replacing it with a chinese knockoff i recommend the rebuild because the rebuild starter might outlast the cheap aftermarket starter now if you don't like digging into starters you can just grab the new one basically take it off put the other one on the same way you don't have to take it apart so everybody like and subscribe and i'll keep the videos coming